get ready for the rebuild, we removed all the systems and the original iron shoe off the keel of the Hindu. Most of the deck planking, as well as the garboard and the first few strikes of hull planking were removed as well. Additionally, the galley, berths, ceiling, cement ballast, keelson, and flooring were removed to begin the rebuild. Next came comparing the drawings against the boat. I mean, what are you doing with that? I'm trying to figure out how uh, symmetrical the boat is, uh -huh. or and that it's level in itself. Uh, so from the center line string up there, I'll put a plumb bump down and see where we land on the, on the keel here. And it should land right in the center. I, so I can level the boat a little to get it there. This is all the drawings we have for the boat, which came from a rudder magazine from 1925. And uh, we'll try and scale them up uh, to a scale so we can take a few reference measurements just to see where where the boat is at now especially with the shear line and uh, make it look pretty in the hindu what do we have what's going on what are those frames why do they look so bad what's going to happen with them <laughs> mike rogers well they're 95 years old oh wow and they've lived a constant life of built water and sometimes aquatic life mm -hmm. and it's this time so they're a little briny they're a little orange what's the orange that's rust from her iron fastenings uh -huh. and how many of these frames are being replaced well we'll tell you when we're done <laughs> From the keelson and forward, all of yeah. the bottom ones. I yeah, think. all the lower stuff. So where there's they're that. made in they're made in pieces. Like this piece goes that high. Oh. All the bottom ends will get replaced. All just, the way to the bow. Yep, yeah, all of them, and then many of them further up. But that will be determined. that will be more of a judgment call. And why do they do it in two different pieces? Well, in heavier construction like this, you have to saw the frames out. In lighter construction, you steam bend frames, but that doesn't offer enough strength for a vessel this size. So, so you're cutting, you're cutting the frames out of. In the best case scenario, crooked stock, but you, I mean, you'll never find a piece of wood that is shaped like that. So, in order to not have excessive grain run out. You know, this piece ends here because the grain starts to run out, yep. you know, the edge of the plank and it becomes weak. Like this is an example of grain run out here. You see that split running across there. Um, you wouldn't want it any more running out any more than that. And even that's not ideal. So you orient the grain more or less to section of the boat and then when it becomes like up in here it starts to turn a sharp corner you would orient the grain more up that way. Simon Larson who recently worked with Mike on the rebuild of the Hindus William Han Jr. sister ship Ladona takes time to orient me to the current dimensions of the well, vessel. We've already, pushed, we've already pushed the bow and the stern up yeah. and uh, some but it there's still a, a hump around the main chain plates. Well, I'm making some quick and dirty molds of one side of the boat. We've noted a pronounced difference in the shape of the boat, the one curvature. side and the other. Yeah. And this is the, the fat side. So I'm taking a few molds of this side and then I carry them over there and then I can see hey, what the difference going, is. Yeah, it's like it's like taking a cross section of the boat, but um, I'm not going the whole way up. But we've yeah. noted that there's, you know, we're about to start reframing. Yeah. And before we start making new frames, we want to get them symmetrical. Yeah, we, yeah. or <laughs> certainly move it. I, I guess Josh had noted over the years that to get her to sit level, you got to put a whole lot of ballast on the starboard side, side. That, yeah. and not the port. 
just to get her to sit level. Interesting. And that would indicate that this side is fuller than the other side. More yeah. buoyancy, yeah. Basically, build our frames into those battens, which are bent to the shape that the hull should be. Cool. We're replacing the white oak frames with black locust because it's more durable. Although it's a common tree and even considered invasive in Maine, it's incredibly rot resistant and strong in many directions of force. Mike and Simon use patterns and chainsaws to shape new frames out of rough slabs. and further perfect them with the bandsaw. This is Mike's bandsaw. It was patented in 1892. Originally, both wheels were made of wood. The bottom one still is wooden. It's a standard bandsaw, not a ship saw per se, as Simon explains the bevel does not change as easily as a ship saw. Sometimes? Oh yeah, yeah. It which is how you want it sometimes. Yeah. The boat, because of the shape of the boat, you need to change the bevels all the time. So you can control it though. That's not... Yeah, this this saw we can just set at one bevel, but... Uh, For most bandsaws you can kind of... Some you can change as you go along, but yeah. it's, it's working pretty good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> what are you working on today? Uh, the, this frame here, trying to build it all the way up. Uh -huh. That would be exciting to have one full frame It would done. kind of be nice to have something intact. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> four and then worked on this one and then skipped four and work on that one. Just trying to maintain the, the structure of the boat as much as we can yeah. uh, while still replacing pretty much everything. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, in the corners where you'd have grain run out, unless you have really, really twisty wood, um, we've used live oak. So if you look right there, you can see where the yellow ends and the gray begins. That's a piece of live oak. And live oak is really known uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, it grows in swamps and in Florida and Georgia regions. Um, and it's just like the grain goes in every direction. So it makes it very hard to work with, very hard to cut because the blade kind of goes whichever way it feels like, whatever the grain is doing. Um, but it's also incredibly strong in a turn and you don't have to worry about grain run out with, like you do with the rest of the wood. So we're using it right in this really sharp turn of the bilge. Need a new tongue twister? How about live oak, live edge, long board? You like live edge on a skateboard? Yeah. It's a way of doing it. Everything's got to be old school. No more, no more riding that dumb van. It's like something like that. It's called the Sasquatch, the Sasquatch skateboard. Main version. Oh, Levi's on his way to work. <laughs> <laughs> getting here <laughs> let's just say uh, it means that we're going 
to actually get it done. It's, uh, it's an impossible find. People said there was no such thing. Shaping Hindu's new keel from a mighty large piece of purple heart. This stuff is pretty hard on cutting tools. Mike Rogers. Shipwrights love their chainsaws. Crazy. That's crazy. I asked if there's any crossover between shipwrights and chainsaw artists. Mike said, nah, but it made him laugh. So there must be some truth in the idea. Oh, no, no, it's wrong. I got it wrong again. Don't record me. Tell me what's the line. <laughs> what are the lines? The rabbit, the back rabbit, and the bearding line. Uh -huh. The beard is on top of the rabbit back line. Yeah. Gotcha. Hey, Simon. <laughs> We're going to see what's going on over here. So what kind of music do you cut rabbits to, huh? <laughs> Parliament. <laughs> Parliament? Yeah. Pete Funk. Pete Funk. And let me see what kind of beer this is. This keel here. It's a purple beer. It's a lot of rabbit. You got a lot of garbage. Spent the day today with my favorite tool. No ear protection needed. This adds was my great-grandfather's. He was a farmer who worked in a Curtis Bay shipyard during World War I, building the ill-fated steamers that the U.S. fed in great numbers to German U-boats. I wish I knew more about him and his brief stint in shipbuilding. We had enough wood to make the keel and the first part of the keel stack. The end of the purple heart is painted so that there's no grain split out, is that right? And then bolted there so it keeps the pressure so that cracks like that one don't develop. And that line there is where the keel will be cut. I can't even imagine how you're going to get this old keel out from under and then the new one put on right. without like... I mean it would be much easier to just Put, put the keel over and there and then build build up the frames from there. Yeah. <laughs> build a new <laughs> oh photo. my gosh, I know. <laughs> I know, I don't understand how this is going to work. Yeah. But, yeah. We're going to have to tie all the frames together well <laughs> before we take this keel out. Oh god, I honey, honey. Yeah. <laughs> Wild. Well, it remains to be seen. Creative blocking jacks and screwed in hull supports allowed space for the Hindu's old wooden keel to come off. <laughs> One small piece of this original wooden keel is still in good enough shape to go back into the boat. And the original iron shoe will go back on underneath the new purple heart keel. This was a surreal moment where the Hindu seemed to float three feet in the air. Although there's still a lot of work to do to get this new keel properly homed, getting it under the Hindu for the first time is an awesome accomplishment for phase one.